iceberg videos and memes have been popular now for approaching two years. Finally, I have created one about a topic filled with many controversies, conspiracies, and forgotten information. Chernobyl. The Reddit post I initially made was flooded with comments requesting a video going in-depth from each topic on the iceberg, so I decided to expand it to contain even more topics and then cover it all for you. There are now more than 200 individual entries, so make sure to get something to eat and drink. This is the Chernobyl Iceberg Explained. Be warned that this iceberg contains a lot of distressing topics and imagery. Chernobyl is a dark subject, these are bound to come up. Viewer's discretion is advised. Chernobyl MPP The Chernobyl MPP is the name of the nuclear power plant where the Chernobyl nuclear disaster occurred. The power plant was composed of four operating units as well as two more under construction at the time of the explosion. HBO miniseries The 2019 HBO miniseries about Chernobyl is generally the most famous popular media about the Chernobyl disaster. April 26, 1986 This is the date of the famous accident generally considered the world's worst nuclear disaster. Reactor 4. This is the reactor that exploded on April 26, 1986. Having entered service in 1983, it was generally considered the prize reactor of the Chernobyl MPP. Dyatlov. Anatoly Dyatlov is the most famous person related to the accident, the deputy chief engineer at the nuclear power plant, portrayed by Paul Ritter in the HBO miniseries. Dyatlov passed away of heart failure in 1995. The new safe confinement. The new safe confinement is the large metal shield over the destroyed Unit 4 reactor, which was built nearby and slid over in 2016 as the largest man-made moving object in the world. It is expected to last for 100 years. The elephant's foot. This is the name of the large mass of corium located on the lower levels of the Reactor 4 building. This was considered the most dangerous thing mankind has created, however today it is emitting nowhere near close to its level of radiation it once was. Pripyat. This is the name of the atom grad close to the Chernobyl MPP, which had a population of nearly 50,000 before the disaster. Today it lies abandoned, visited only by tourists and illegal visitors to the exclusion zone, known as stalkers. The sarcophagus. The sarcophagus is a large structure built over the remains of the fourth reactor to enclose the radioactive debris and preventing the radiation from escaping into the environment. Its original name was the Eucrity. Stalker. This is a famous game series by GSC Game World that takes place in an alternative version of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, where a second disaster has occurred, filling the area with anomalies. The fourth game in the series, Heart of Chernobyl, is expected to come out in 2023. Voices of Chernobyl This is a book by Svetlana Alexievich, containing testimony from dozens of people about their experiences surrounding the Chernobyl disaster. YouTube Documentaries Dozens of documentaries have been made on YouTube about the Chernobyl disaster. Very few of them are good though. Oh well. Chernobyl 012340. This is a book written by Andrew Leverbarrow in 2016. The history segments are mixed with Leverbarrow's own experiences exploring the exclusion zone. Valery Legasov, an inorganic chemist at the Kachatov Institute. He was sent to the disaster to help limit the severity. Legasov would take his own life in 1988 on the second year anniversary of the disaster, leaving behind a series of tapes about his experiences during the liquidation. Pripyat Ferris Wheel An icon of the accident, the Ferris Wheel was a part of the amusement park in the centre of Pripyat, intended to open on May 1st, 1986. Chernobyl 1986, a Russian film about the disaster, available to watch on Netflix. A lot less historically accurate than the HBO dramatisation, but a fun action movie, I suppose. Midnight in Chernobyl, a 2019 book by Adam Higginbotham that claims to be the first English language account that is close to the truth, but that is left to interpretation. Chernobyl Divers, three power plant workers, Valery Bespalov, Alexei Anonenko and Boris Baranov were sent to open release valves to drain water building up in the lower levels of the unit. All three survived the journey and two are still alive today. History of a Tragedy, a book by Serhi Plucky published in 2018 that covers the events of the April 26, 1986 disaster. Reactors 5 and 6 
The last two reactors were abandoned while under construction and can be visited on tours of the exclusion zone. They have two large cooling towers, making them unique from the other RBMK reactors built. Duga. The Duga radar is a large over-the-horizon radar designed to detect missile launches around the world. The interference created by the radar on radio stations led to it being known as the Russian Woodpecker, due to the noise it made. It was abandoned following a disaster and can also be explored in the exclusion zone. Roblox games. Several Roblox multiplayer versions of the power plant and the disaster have been created to simulate various areas of the building, the explosion, and the following days. Cooling Pond. The large artificial lake to the east of the power plant is known as the Cooling Pond and was used to supply the MPP with coolant water for use by the heat exchangers in the turbine hall. The Truth About Chernobyl. A book written shortly after the disaster by Grigory Medvedev, it is infamous for its lack of historical accuracy. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin Nuclear Power Plant. This is the original name of the Chernobyl MPP, which you can see on the roof of the administration building in old photos. A Lenin bust also used to be in front of the administration building, but it is gone now. In Sag 1, this is the 1986 report on the causes of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, which primarily blames the operators for the disaster, disabling the safety systems and removing the control rods, ignoring procedures. It was formally approved by the International Atomic Energy Association, formalising it as their official causes for the accident, in 1986 at least. Due to its now proven faults and the amount of lies it contains, it has been scrubbed from the International Atomic Energy Association's website. A Blaze. This is a 1993 book by Piers Paul Reed about the Chernobyl disaster, notable for being based heavily in interviews. It still falls victim to several errors in history, like the other books previously mentioned on the list. The Claw. This is the infamous piece of machinery that was found on the outskirts of Pripyat, highly radioactive at the time and becoming infamous as a result. Unit 2 Turbine Hole Fire. In 1991, a mishap at the fourth turbo generator in the turbine hole caused it to be reconnected to the grid while running down for maintenance. This caused the turbine to run back up to full speed in 30 seconds, overheating the generator and causing hydrogen and oil to leak from damaged conductor elements. This ignited and started major fires in the turbine hole. Because firefighters weren't concerned with the roof and the ventilation and sprinkler systems couldn't cope with the heat or smoke, the structural supports themselves failed at a temperature more than 900 degrees Celsius. A large 50 meter by 50 meter section of the roof collapsed into the turbine hole. After repairs, it was decided not to start up Unit 2 again. Alexander Akimov, the shift supervisor of the night during the 1986 disaster received a fatal dose of radiation during attempts to restart emergency coolant flow to the reactor. Leonid Toptonov, the senior reactor engineer on the night shift during the 1986 disaster. Like Akimov, he received a fatal dose of radiation during attempts to restart emergency coolant flow to the reactor. Chernobyl 2, the secretive town that housed the operators of the Dugu radar, with a population of about 1,000. The inhabitants had access to a cinema, a hospital, a school, and it had its own fire station. The town was abandoned in 1986 following the Chernobyl disaster. Unit 1 Meltdown In 1982, a single coolant valve for the reactor was closed during maintenance and was not opened when the reactor was restarted. This caused the fuel in this channel to melt down when the reactor was started. The radiation release was contained, and the reactor was repaired and restarted eight months later. Viktor Brukhanov the director of the Chernobyl MPP from the construction until the disaster, sentenced to prison due to his accused role in what happened. When he was released, he returned to the nuclear power plant, retiring in 2015 due to poor eyesight. He had also suffered three strokes by 2016. He then developed Parkinson's disease. Brokhanov passed away in October 2021. Diagnostic boys. The large boys placed on top of the upper biological shield and inside the reactor core used to monitor temperature and radiation. Palace of Culture The large building in the centre of Pripyat that served as a hub for the population. Weddings were often held there and it also hosted a theatre, a swimming pool and even a boxing ring. Nikolai Fomin The chief engineer of the nuclear power plant. Before the disaster, 
It was believed that he once locked himself in his own apartment and then jumped out of the window. He crashed his car into the same birch tree, twice. Another car accident saw him get distracted driving to his stature and roll the car over multiple times, damaging his spine. During the accident, he was noticed to alternate between trying to act and then receding into a corner and crying. While in prison, he attempted to take his own life by breaking his glasses and using it to cut his wrist. This delayed the trial. He spent most of his sentence in a psychiatric ward. The last information suggests that he lives alone, although it is unknown if he's still alive today. 2020 wildfires. A large wildfire broke out across the center of the Chernobyl exclusion zone in 2020, due to a tourist starting a small fire in a dry grass for, quote, for fun, end quote. He made no attempt to put it out, and the resulting fire stretched all the way from the town of Chernobyl to Duga and as far as north as Pripyat. The wildlife cost is unknown. Tarkovsky Stalker. Stalker is a 1979 film by Andrei Tarkovsky, in which a writer and a professor attempt to explore the zone, the place where an untold disaster occurred, leaving strange anomalies, accompanied by a stalker, a person who illegally visits the zone. At the heart of the zone is bunker number four, which houses the room, a place that grants wishes. I will not spoil the film, it is one that needs to be watched, often ranked as one of the best films of all time, but people have drawn comparisons between Stalker and Chernobyl, such as Bunker Number 4, representing Control Room 4, and the unknown radiation providing a hazard-like anomaly. These coincidences are why people who illegally visit the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone are called Stalkers, and inspired the video game series Stalker. Boris Stolyachuk, the senior pump engineer of Chernobyl Reactor 4 on the night shift. He survived, becoming a nuclear regulator from Ukraine, and given many interviews about his experiences in the disaster. Toptonov pressed AZ-5. Despite many shows claiming that Akimov pressed the AZ-5 button, virtually everyone in the control room claimed that Toptonov pushed it instead. This makes sense, as Akimov was on the other side of the control room when the button was pressed. Boris Shabina, Deputy Chairman of the Council of Ministers and became head of the Government Commission to deal with the Chernobyl disaster. He also participated in managing the damage of the 1988 Armenian earthquake. Shabina passed away in 1990, though it is unknown if it was caused by radiation exposure, as Shabina drafted a decree in 1988 that prevented radiation from being cited as a cause of illness or death. In SAG-7, the 1993 second report by the International Atomic Energy Agency about the Chernobyl disaster. In light of new information, it effectively rewrote the official story of the disaster levelling the blame mostly at design flaws inside the RBMK reactor. BBC Surviving Disaster, a British TV series from 2006 that covered many disasters throughout history, one of which was the Chernobyl disaster. This hour-long show covers events from 1986 to 1988, with focus on the efforts of the Chernobyl divers who opened the release valves to drain the water. Firefighter Phone Calls Nearly five minutes of phone calls between firefighters from the night of the disaster have been released including the small sections available on YouTube and the HBO miniseries. This includes calls with Rogozhkin, the chief shift supervisor on the night, and the official announcement of the localization of the fire. Alexander Yevchenko Yevchenko was an engineer at the plant during the time of the disaster. He participated in the infamous attempt to access the reactor hall and the search for survivors. He ultimately survived the disaster, despite accumulating a massive dose of radiation, 4.1 sieverts. Yevchenko eventually died as a result of leukemia in 2008. He was 47. Slavutich, the city purpose-built to house the people evacuated due to the Chernobyl disaster and the workers of the nuclear power plant after the accident. It is notable for having different districts designed by each of the separate republics inside the Soviet Union, which is why different areas feature different architecture. Kopachi One of the many abandoned villages inside the exclusion zone, with a population of 1,116 at the time of the disaster. All buildings, with the exception of the kindergartens, were buried, as well as a few surviving former apartments. It is a famous point on tours. Telyatnikov Major Leonid Telyatnikov was the commander of the firefighters throughout much of the night of the disaster. Despite government officials officially intending to charge Telyatnikov alongside others such as Bukhanov, Fomin and Dyatlov, he became a public hero in the Soviet Union and worldwide. 
even though many firefighters blamed him for absorbing high dosages of radiation, such as putting two firefighters on the roof of the turbine hall all night to spot any fires that might have started up again. Telyapnikov died of cancer of the jaw in 2004. Kubni Alexander Kubni was a worker at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant between 1988 and 2009, famous for participating in expeditions to some of the most radioactive areas of the sarcophagus, such as the reactor hole and the elephant's foot. He has a YouTube channel where he uploads videos of these expeditions and interviews with workers from the nuclear power plant. Pripyat White House The large apartment opposite the Palace of Culture is known as the White House. This is the apartment where Viktor Brokhanov lived. Kursk MPP Chernobyl's old twin sister. Both nuclear power plants share the same design, with Kursk starting construction a year before Chernobyl. The first unit shut down in 2021, however the other three units are still active at this time. Alexei Breyes, senior pump engineer on the shift after the disaster, participated in some of the final operations to attempt to save the reactor, including an attempt to restart emergency cooling flow. He is still alive today. Valery Hodimchuk, the first person to die in the Chernobyl disaster, when the North Pump Hole collapsed. Hodimchuk was a senior operator. His body was never recovered and a memorial was created to commemorate his death inside the nuclear power plant. Igor Kirshenbaum. Kirshenbaum was the senior turbine engineer on the night of the disaster. He was dismissed from the fourth unit by Diamov early in the night, receiving a low dose of radiation as a result. He is believed to still be alive today. Igor Kostin stole his helicopter flight footage. Igor Kostin is a famous Chernobyl photographer. However, it is known that he stole a lot of his footage. In the 2006 documentary, The Battle of Chernobyl, he claimed to have recorded the power plant on the morning after the disaster. It is now known this footage was taken on the evening of April 28, 1988, by Konstantin Polushkin, a member of the Government Commission. Zalicia. Another abandoned village inside the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, which had a population of nearly 3,000. Unlike Apache, most of the buildings here are still intact, including a school, a courthouse and a theatre. There are also several army warehouses nearby. Chernobyl divers never went underwater. Despite many claims that the divers wore oxygen tanks and thick rubber suits, these are false. They in fact only wore rubber boots, a face mask and their regular work attire, nor did they even step in the water. There was a pipe that ran along the corridor that all three divers were able to walk across to get to the valves. The divers have reported that the radiation was not at a noticeable level, and, and two are still alive today. Smolensk Nuclear Power Plant Chernobyl's youngest sister It uses the same design as Units 3 and 4 reactors at Chernobyl, but only three units of it were built. The fourth unit was cancelled in 1993. All reactors are still running, with the first plant to shut down in 2027. Vehicle grave sites. Many of the abandoned vehicles used to liquidate the disaster were left in large grave sites scattered throughout the exclusion zone. Russian trenches near the nuclear power plant. During the 2022 invasion of Ukraine by Russia, the Russians were found to have dug several trenches near the nuclear power plant. These were abandoned when Russia retreated from the exclusion zone. Expeditions inside the sarcophagus. To locate the fuel that had melted out of the reactor, Multiple expeditions inside the sarcophagus were performed, exploring every single room inside the nuclear power plant. Checkpoint Dityak The main entry and exit to the exclusion zone, used by tourists. Dosavivskaya Stairs A large flight of stairs added to the sarcophagus to make reaching the radioactive areas of the building safer. You can see the bottom of the stairs as they cut through the south pump hole of Unit 4. Nikolai Steinberg The former chief engineer of the nuclear power plant, who led the INSAG-7 report. He also wrote a book on the disaster called Past, Present and Future. Today, he lives in Israel. Polisk, a city in the far west of the exclusion zone, which had a former population of 10,000. While you can visit it today, the interiors of the building are mostly gone, as it was used as a training place by the Ukrainian army. Inseparable, a Ukrainian TV series, a love story set during the liquidation of the accident. The creators of the CGI model for the series returned to create the model for HBO. The mop next to the elephant's foot. The old photos of the elephant's foot show a mop that was adjacent to the large Corian mass. This is here even before workers could approach the elephant's foot. Later photos show that the mop was moved behind a column to the left of the elephant's foot. The person who did this is unknown. 
Stalker Claw War. There is an ongoing war between groups of stalkers. One group rushes to graffiti the infamous claw mentioned earlier, painting it for a variety of colours. The other group are more purists, removing the graffiti. The most the Ukrainian government did to stop this was place a small chain nearby to deter people. However, you can easily walk past it. Shooting the elephant's foot with an AK-47 To collect samples of the elephant's foot, the scientists attempted to use small robots. This proved ineffective, as the robots couldn't break the surface. Scientists then decided to ask the police to give them an AK-47 to shoot the elephant's foot to break the surface. The police also provided a shooter alongside the gun. The targets were all hit, and they also blew off the top of the elephant's foot which is why it looks different between early photos and modern photos. The zone expanded in 1997. Due to updated radiation readings in 1996, the exclusion zone was expanded in 1997. This is why police was abandoned, and also causes the zone to partially cut through a highway built before the expansion. Concrete panels inside the reactor core. It has been discovered that two concrete panels from the reactor hall, forming the wall between the reactor hall and the north steam separators, were somehow blown inwards during the explosion, landing inside the reactor core itself. As they have not been damaged by melting fuel, they provide a massive piece of evidence against some popular theories of the Chernobyl explosion, as most theories would mean that the concrete panels would have melted. Measures to improve safety inside RBMK a 1987 series of improvements to the RBMK reactors to prevent another explosion. This included shortening the graphite water displacers and replacing the AZ-5 button with a switch. The reason for this is covered further in the iceberg. Abandoned vehicles are now buried. Many of the vehicles abandoned by the residents during the liquidation are now buried underground at waste sites to reduce radioactivity. The chosen burial site is located at Buryakivka, Chernobyl International Forum an annual international forum about the nuclear disaster, the liquidation of modern nuclear power. The turbines used to be red and white. Before the disaster, the turbines were coloured red and white. After the disaster, the surviving turbines were painted orange and purple. All turbines have been dismantled since the shutdown of Reactor 3. HBO ripped off BBC's surviving disaster. A number of similarities between BBC's surviving disaster episode on Chernobyl and the HBO miniseries have been spotted by people who have watched both. Both start with the gas of suicide and transition to the accident. Both have focused scenes on the divers. Both have a scene where Legasov realises the cause of the accident had occurred before at Ignalina. Both share a scene where Legasov is told by his superiors that he must follow through with the lie. Both end with Legasov feeling guilty for his actions and then committing suicide as a result. And then both end with white text and images on a black background and an explanation of the fates of the survivors. Because of this, many have suggested that HBO stole a lot of its content from the surviving disaster documentary. The hotel was used to coordinate bombing runs. Despite widespread belief that the liquidators coordinated the helicopter bombing runs from on top of a building at the nuclear power plant, in real life this was done from the Pripyat Hotel. State Emergency Service of Ukraine, the government agency that officially owns the new exclusion zone. They also head the emergency service fire response in the Kiev area. All tourism is sanctioned by this government agency. The HBO story is the lie presented at Vienna. The HBO miniseries claimed to tell the true story of the disaster, however their version of events more closely aligns with the government lie presented at Vienna in 1986, instead of the Insight 7 or Survivor testimony. This is likely because the lie is the version most often presented in books, including those used as a source for the miniseries. The Hanging Tree A three-pronged tree near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In World War II, Nazis used to hang prisoners from this tree as a warning to the civilians nearby. The tree started to rot in the late 1990s and collapsed by 2005, being moved a few kilometres away and covered in roof tiles to slow its decay, which proved effective as it is very much recognisable in its most recent photos. Many religious groups have seen it as an icon, claiming that it protected Pripyat following the disaster, hence images can be found in the St. Elijah Church at the town of Chernobyl. A memorial to the hanging tree lies in its original place. Fake AZ-5 was moved claims. 
There are claims that AZ-5 was originally at the bottom of the reactor desk instead of its current position at the top. This is false. The original source was a Chernobyl MPP tour guide, but they've stopped telling people that fact today. There are videos of the control room of Reactor 4 showing the red AZ-5 button before the disaster. Unit 3 and 4 pump holes were connected before the disaster. The main circulation pump hole used to be locked, as it made transporting the machinery together. This is because the reactors were rotated compared to Units 1 and 2. There is an incredible panorama showing the connected pump holes with the collapsed Unit 4 site. The destroyed pump hole was walled off before Unit 3 was restarted. The dead homeless man found in Pripyat. In several books, such as Ablaze, reference is made to a dead homeless man found under a bridge near Pripyat. The identity of the person remains unknown, and there is no evidence to prove or disprove his existence. The Rosanovsky Affair During the night of the disaster, Gennady Rosanovsky remained near the North Pump Hole in a state of shock, begging others to look for Hodomchuk. It took two separate attempts to move him away from the damage. Rosanovsky passed away in 2017. Chernobyl, a documentary story. A book by Yuri Sherbak about the disaster, containing a large amount of witness testimony from people who were there. This book is overshadowed heavily by other Chernobyl books, despite its quality. The Polizhi State Ecological Reserve. The Belarusian side of the exclusion zone. Larger than the Ukrainian side, but containing far fewer major locations and far less visited by tourists. Nikolai Karpin. An engineer who worked at Chernobyl, he worked on the day of April 26 and published several books following due to his access to the Chernobyl trials. Chisto Galivka, another village in the exclusion zone, abandoned on May 3rd, 1986. It also became a burial site and a scientific research zone to determine ways to reduce radioactivity. Crops were ground and even a herd of cows were kept on site. Funding cuts saw this site abandoned once more by 2000. 2006 Stabilization Project To stabilise the sarcophagus before the new safe confinement could be completed, the 2006 Stabilization Project saw additional supports added to the sarcophagus to help prop it up. These include the distinctive yellow trusses on the western wall of the sarcophagus in the modern day. Roland Sergienko, a documentary creator who travelled to Chernobyl immediately following the disaster. He has made several documentaries about Chernobyl, including The Bell of Chernobyl and Threshold. Chernobyl, Insight from the Inside. This is a 1991 book about the Chernobyl disaster by Vladimir Chernosenko, former director of the Exclusion Zone. It contains a large amount of information about the disaster, medical reports, and witness testimony from the survivors. Black Dust. In the days after the disaster, witnesses have reported seeing black dust powder in the ground near the nuclear power plant and either larger chips of the core seen in fields between the nuclear power plant and Pripyat. Raspad. Raspad, or Decay, is a 1990 film about the Chernobyl disaster from the perspective of those who were there. It is noteworthy in being one of the first films about the 1986 disaster. Denisovichi, an abandoned town near the northern border of the exclusion zone. Firefighters from this town participated in the initial attempts to extinguish the fire on the night of April 26. It is exceedingly rare for tours to visit this part of the exclusion zone. Revenge of the Peaceful Atom Revenge of the Peaceful Atom, a book by Nikolai Karpin, is considered the bibliography of INSAC 7 due to the large amount of information contained, such as second-by-second -second information from the computers that monitored the reactor. Stained Glass Windows The stained glass windows in the main administration building of the nuclear power plant depict the story of Prometheus from the perspective of the Soviets, with Prometheus bringing fire down to the people, and then Lenin bringing electricity to the Soviet Union, ending with nuclear power. The windows were displayed officially on April 23, 1986, three days before the disaster, surviving the liquidation and are still there today in the stairwells. The Bridge of Death story never happened. The famous story of people watching the disaster unfold from the railway bridge near Pripyat is false. There are no witnesses who have claimed anyone stood there on the night. There are people who stood there on the day after, but they are still alive today. The AZ-5 button was pressed at 01-2339. Despite the button being officially pressed at 01-2340, it is known that the computer operates on a one second delay. Per Revenge of the Peaceful Atom, the computer did in fact print at the time of the button being pressed at 01-2339am. Alexander Agilov, the senior operator of the Unit 3 pump hole during the disaster, 
He was with Yuvchenko during the explosion and would later participate in the search for Hodonchuk that night. He survived and is still alive today. Sounds of Chernobyl. This is an hour-long 2021 album produced by the Ukrainian government by various Ukrainian and international artists focused on Chernobyl. It includes various genres and is definitely worth listening to if you have the time. Autopsy photos. The photos of the victims of the Chernobyl disaster were made available in several documentaries. The graphic footage remains a stark reminder of the consequences of radiation exposure to humans. Fuel lodged on Auto Transformer 7. During the explosion, a piece of fuel managed to lodge itself in an auto transformer near the 7th turbine. This went unnoticed by people in the turbine hold during the attempts to extinguish fires breaking out there, resulting in several people dying as they received massive radiation dosages. Decaying Joker The Joker robot, which failed on the roof of the Chernobyl MPP, is still viewable today in the vehicle museum. It is not that radioactive today. The Identity of Demchenko the 2020 book, Chernobyl, a Stalker's Guide, sees the author able to explore various areas of the exclusion zone, thanks to an individual named Demchenko. At the end, it is made clear that Demchenko is in fact a false name given to an amalgamation of people, though their real names are unknown, possibly because of the illegality of their actions. Mammoth Beam A large metal beam running east to west on top of the reactor building, used to support the sarcophagus roof. It rests partially on the undamaged wall of the nuclear power plant. However, the walls were cracked during the explosion, and the weight of the mammoth beam, 127 tons, could have caused the wall to come down in the future. Collections of rare photos on VK. A large number of VK sites include thousands of rare or unseen photos about the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, including floor plans, the construction of the nuclear power plant, photos before the disaster, and images inside the sarcophagus today. Medvedev made up Perevozchenko's run. The famous story of Perevozchenko running from the reactor hall just before the explosion was made up by Grigory Medvedev in The Truth About Chernobyl. This was most likely to create tension. Americans put a bomb in the reactor hall conspiracy. Russia has regularly suggested that the CIA placed a bomb in the reactor hall of Unit 4, blowing it up and causing a Chernobyl disaster. No evidence of this has ever been produced to support it, and mostly used as a distraction from Russia's own failings in the disaster. The 1968 Plans for the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant The original 1968 plans for the Chernobyl MPP are available online. There are a number of differences between these concept images and the now complete Units 1 and 2, such as there being two ventilation stacks, a much wider connection between the buildings and different heights. A draft of Pripyat is also seen. It gives us an insight into the ideas being thrown around for what we could have seen at Chernobyl today. Dyatlov was innocent. It is now widely accepted that Dyatlov was framed for his role in the disaster, and his actions were not as severe as once thought. To give you an idea of false information produced in light of the disaster, mostly by Medvedev, Witness testimony shows that Dyatlov did not argue with operators to force them to raise the power, was one of the first to realise that the reactor was destroyed, and also one of the first to understand the cause of the disaster. In prison, he wrote various letters to international bodies in an attempt to prove his innocence, eventually resulting in the publication of INSAC 7. His evidence was censored by the Soviet government during the trial, even as he tried to exonerate Akimov, Toptonov, and other workers for their role in the disaster. The outlaw is yet to receive any form of public acquittal. The elephant's foot is collapsing into dust. Modern photos of the elephant's foot show that the outside is turning black and numerous cracks are forming across the outside. It is expected that in the coming years, the elephant's foot will have fallen apart into dust, a ghost of what it once was. Russia set fire to their own trenches theory. On March 28, 2022, Satellite images collected by the Sentinel-2 satellite show multiple large fires burning in the exact location of the trenches that Russia dug during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. This, coupled with reports that Russian soldiers were being treated for burns, suggests that Russia accidentally started fires in their trenches, causing major injuries. Sarcophagus is unstable and might collapse. The sarcophagus is known to be unstable due to a variety of structural issues, meaning in the future it is likely to implode. If it does, it is predicted that it will cause a large amount of dust to be released into the new safe confinement. 
This would mean that a new, new safe confinement will need to be built over the top of the old one. 176 workers on site. At the four operational units of the Chernobyl MPP, it is known that 176 workers were on site at the time of the explosion. A further 268 builders were working at Unit 5 at the time. Hospital 6 footage. Rare videos are available online, in particular on VK, showing the work of doctors inside Moscow Hospital 6, attempting to treat the patients from Chernobyl. Some of it is in black and white, but some sections are in colour, offering a unique insight into a place we rarely see. Dead Moroz visits the Chernobyl MPP. Dead Moroz is a fictional character similar to Santa Claus in the West, the difference being that he delivers presents on New Year's Eve instead of Christmas Eve. One video shows Dead Moroz visiting the workers of the Chernobyl MPP and interviewing them for television, offering an insight into ordinary work at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant following the disaster. Reserve RZM Control Room The large refueling machine inside the Chernobyl reactor hall was normally piloted from the cockpit of the machine itself. However, it could also be controlled inside the reserve refueling machine control room. It is theorised that Yovchenko, Perevozchenko, Proskuryakov and Kudryavstep attempted to enter the reactor hall from here on the night of the disaster. Sarcophagus is supported by gravity alone. Related to the instability of the sarcophagus, it is a known fact that the sarcophagus lacks any foundations. It is instead only balanced atop the reactor by gravity alone, hence why it may collapse soon. The chair inside the reactor hall. Photographs inside the reactor hall taken by Kutney show a red chair on the eastern side of the reactor hall. He has no idea how it managed to end up in such a position. Various theories have been thrown around, but it is likely that it came from the reserve RZM control room. Firefighters drinking radioactive water. Witness testimony suggests that, on the night of the disaster, firefighters were seen drinking from hose pipes connected to contaminated sources of water. The damage done by this would haunt these firefighters later in life. Black rain over the cooling pond. On the night of the disaster, fishermen indicated seeing black rainfall on the cooling pond, staining the faces of the fishermen caught up in the rain. This downpour proved to be highly radioactive. Floor plans. The entire floor plans of the reactor building before the accident are available online, complete with labelling of each room. They are often used for either tracing the route of workers during expeditions or in witness testimony, or creating recreations of the power plant. Cascade Walled Future Plans Despite being a part of the sarcophagus and the burial place of the Hodemchuk, it is understood that the future plans for the sarcophagus do not include the dismantling of the Cascade Wall, the large west section of the building where it steps down. The last photo before the disaster. There are many photos taken of Unit 4 shortly before the explosion. One of these, however, appears to show the reactor building on April 16th, 1986, just 10 days before the disaster. Kostya Chechorov's Flagging Nuclear Reactor Konstantin Chechorov was a physicist from the Kachatov Institute, the organisation that helped to develop the RBMK reactor. Chechorov was one of the people who joined the expeditions into the sarcophagus, claiming to have visited the site more than 1,500 times. Eventually, he created his own theory for what happened on the night. It is quite bizarre compared to others. His opinion is that, despite all the evidence presented, the reactor floors had nothing to do with the disaster. He believed that pumps failed, which led to a loss of water inside the reactor core. With no water, the individual fuel channels then started to fission, turning into miniature nuclear jets. These nuclear jets then propelled the entire reactor core out of the reactor before exploding in midair. It's a crazy theory, but it managed to convince Nikolai Karpin at least partially, and there is some evidence for it. However, it will always be jokingly called the Flying Nuclear Reactor. Fake Russian Woodpecker Conspiracy Theories There is a conspiracy theory documentary called The Russian Woodpecker, alluding to the Duga Radar. The theory suggests that the Duga Radar was not working due to the Northern Lights, and therefore, to hide this fact, the head of the project ordered the Chernobyl employees to proceed with the test even though the reactor was unstable. The person named at pushing the employees is Vasily Shamshin, no evidence of a phone call has ever been shown, and the design defects that led to the explosion were known only to a few people, disproving this theory. 
The film ends with the presenter giving a speech about his conspiracy at the Euro Maiden protests before the 2014 Ukrainian government collapsed. The Lost Tapes contains no new footage. The 2022 documentary Chernobyl The Lost Tapes, produced by HBO, claims to show never before seen footage and has received praise from various viewers and critics for such. However, careful examination of the film has shown that none of the footage in the film is actually new, coming mostly from old documentaries such as Chronicle of Difficult Weeks, upscaled for HD viewing. Unit 4 Turbine Hall roof collapsed before the new safe confinement was slid over. On February 12, 2013, news broke that the roof of the 8th turbine of the nuclear power plant collapsed into the building. Most likely caused by the failure of a truss holding the roof, it brought down 600 square metres of the roof. Fortunately, this did not cause any part of the sarcophagus itself to collapse, and the new safe confinement was moved over the top of the building in 2016. Micro District 6. Pripyat was officially comprised of five different micro districts where each of the residents lived. However, a sixth one was being prepared at the time of the explosion. You can still see the area on Google Earth today, the large area stripped of trees and grass with sand covering the top. Much of this sand would later be used to drop on top of the reactor during bombing runs. Taxi Ivankiv. The penalty for being caught as a stalker used to be a much less severe fine than it is today. When caught, stalkers would generally be given the equivalent of a $20 fine and then given a ride to the police station in Ivankiv, just outside the exclusion zone. This was nicknamed the Taxi Ivankiv or Taxi to Ivankiv. Today, fines have been strengthened greatly and people can now receive a 3-7 to seven year long prison sentence, though this has not deterred stalkers. Mobile Laboratory in the Turbine Hall A mobile laboratory was positioned in the Turbine Hall at the time of the explosion. This vehicle was owned by the Kharkiv Turbine Plant, who produced Chernobyl's turbines and was used to collect and analyse data parameters such as vibrations. The workers of the Kharkiv Turbine Plant were reluctant to leave the mobile laboratory behind after the explosion, leading to many of them dying due to radiation exposure. Chernobyl, a Documentary Story Extended Edition the book Chernobyl A Documentary Story by Yuri Sherbak actually has two editions. The popular English edition is the short version. The Ukrainian edition of the book is several hundred pages longer, containing much more witness testimony. There was a suggestion that the extended version of the book would be translated into English in 2020. However, Sherbak contracted severe COVID-19, and since then there has been no updates about the book, suggesting the translation will not be released anytime soon. Brokhanov's Dacha Brokhanov had a dacha, or country house, outside of Pripyat, although the exact location has never been established. According to Piers Paul Reed in A Blaze, Brokhanov was actually at the dacha during the explosion and made his way from the dacha to the power plant later than he should have because he missed the phone call about the emergency, which went to his apartment instead. This is supported by the fact that Reed interviewed Brokhanov for the book, making it highly probable. However, the Darcha is yet to be identified if it hasn't been destroyed already. Why there are so many dogs in the exclusion zone Despite intense efforts during the liquidation of the Chernobyl disaster to eliminate all pets, including dogs, the population of domesticated dogs inside the Chernobyl exclusion zone remains massive. The reason for this is that the guards of the nuclear power plant used to feed the stray dogs, leading to a population explosion when tourists also started to feed them. This is quite tragic, as most dogs did not survive the harsh winter of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, including puppies. Charities for several years have been trying to neuter the dogs, and it has been possible to adopt these dogs internationally. As of 2022, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has led to a massive amount of these dogs dying of starvation. 3828 The number of liquidators who participated in cleaning the most contaminated areas of the nuclear power plant roof. This is also in the name of a documentary about the subject, which is available on YouTube. Operation Needle This was a special operation in which helicopter pilots attempted to measure the radiation and temperature of the reactor core by lowering an 18 meter long metal pipe into the reactor shaft. 
Despite technical difficulties, which saw the 300 meter long measuring cable fall out of the unit in the wrong place, and have to be retrieved by smashing a window in the auxiliary building and then pulling the cable in, it was a success. The information showed that the reactor core had a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and was emitting 180 X-rays per hour. The heap is more radioactive than the elephant's foot. A large piece of corium in the bubbler pools under the reactor, known as the heap, is 20% more radioactive than the elephant's foot. Despite this, its lack of beauty and smaller size, as well as being discovered after the elephant's foot, meant it is far well less known than the larger mass of corium. Footage from April 26. Three photos have officially been released that show the disaster on the day of the explosion. All three were taken by Anatoly Raskizov by helicopter at approximately 3 p.m. in the afternoon. All they show are the destroyed room and the large amount of white smoke and steam emitting from the reactor hall. Inside ABK2, the second administration building of the Chernobyl MPP, also known as ABK2, was located between reactors 3 and 4. Despite previously being used for offices, medical care and decontamination, footage from the inside is infamously difficult to discover. Only a few select photos have been released. Graphite flakes on leaves. Some people have reported seeing flakes of black graphite spots on the leaves of trees in the nearby forests around Chernobyl. This was most often reported around the Red Forest, famous as the leaves turned red as they died. Biorobots was a slur. The term biorobots has been used to describe the people who cleared the heavily contaminated roofs of debris following the disaster. This was actually a slur created by General Tarakanov. Frustrated by the slow speed of robots being used to clear the roof, Tarakanov suggested that they should replace them with, quote, his biorobots, end quote. This ultimately proved more successful, and all deadlines to clear the roof were reached, at the cost of many lives. Klavdia Luzganova Klavdia Luzganova is one of the two women who are considered official victims of the Chernobyl disaster. She was guarding the construction area around the interim storage facility for nuclear waste. This was just 200 meters from the destroyed reactor. She was not warned for the radiation. Yekaterina Ivanenko Yekaterina Ivanenko is the other woman who is considered an official victim of the Chernobyl disaster. She guarded the gate opposite Reactor 4, which the MPP's fire brigade passed through on the way to the fire. Both Ivanenko and Luzganova were found on a road near the MPP, vomiting, in the morning after and were escorted to the hospital by ambulance. Crimson Glow on the night of April 26. Multiple witnesses report seeing a red glow inside the reactor hall on the night after the disaster. It is theorised that this is possibly due to a criticality inside the reactor hall itself, as it was not seen on nights after the 26th. Chernobyl was used to hide Duga. The Duga radar location was not chosen randomly. The position was so close to the MPP to the point that it can be seen through the destroyed unit in some photos, and built around the same time to hide the construction materials being transported to the site. It was assumed that the satellite photos would detect the transport of steel but assume it was for the nearby nuclear power plant instead. This proved true, as the existence of the Duga radar was not known until the Chernobyl disaster. Summiting Elena Videos from sarcophagus expeditions show scientists attempting to measure the movement of Elena, and one scientist managed to climb on top of the upper biological shield itself and raise his hand in triumph. An incredible sight to behold, mankind's conquest of the most dangerous place on the planet. Sam S-75 Volkov Located about 10 kilometers south of Pripyat and 3 kilometers from the nearest major road, a hidden Volkov anti-air missile base can be found. Very little information is known about the base, but you can still visit it today. The sarcophagus' end-of-life deadline is 2023. Current architectural information about the sarcophagus indicates that its stability can only be guaranteed at this point until the end of 2023. Every year after that, the risk of the sarcophagus collapsing will grow. Due to the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, the planned removal of the sarcophagus roof has been delayed.
The control room videos and audio is locked in Moscow. Video footage and audio recordings of the control room on the night of April 26, 1986 is known to exist. However, it was confiscated by the prosecutor's general office following the disaster. This vital information remains locked in the office in Moscow and it is unknown if it will ever be released. 2022 Russian TV series an 11-episode TV series has been released about the Chernobyl disaster, created supposedly to tell the true story following their complaints about inaccuracy in the HBO series. This Russian version instead repeats the CIA agent planting a bomb conspiracy. This has been in development for years. The trailer for the series was originally published in 2019, but deleted due to backlash. Missing firefighter helmet from hospital number 126. It is well known that firefighter clothing was left in the basement of hospital number 126 due to the elevated levels of radioactive contamination. The considerable number of people attempting to enter the basement, including one case of someone trying to wear the firefighter uniforms, resulted in the Ukrainian government filling the entrance to the basement with sand to make entry impossible. However, one tourist had pulled out one of the firefighter helmets from inside and left it at the entrance to the hospital. By 2021, it had disappeared, and nobody knows where it has gone. If it has left the exclusion zone, it could be spreading radioactive contamination as you watch. Lunch on VT2 Several photographs from the construction of Units 3 and 4 show workers having a lunch atop the second vent tower, a taste into the world before the disaster at Chernobyl. Valentina Karpenko The female voice on the firefighter phone calls is by a woman named Valentina Karpenko. She was the dispatcher for the Central Fire Control Service of the Fire Protection Department of the Kiev region. Karpenko passed away in November of 2020. Legasov Suicide Motives In most documentary series, Legasov commits suicide out of guilt for participating in the cover-up of the disaster. This is not what happened in real life, however. Legasov himself had no issues with the KGB or government. He was, however, suffering from radiation-related illnesses, including pancreatic cancer and bone marrow disease. He was already not eating or sleeping, and had attempted to commit suicide before by overdosing on sleeping pills. Legasov's own suggestion to revolutionise the Kachatov Institute by creating an institute of safety had failed, being sidelined by his own mentor as well. Legasov's suicide was motivated by ill health and the loss of his career. Stalker Bridge in Martinovici The easiest way to access the zone is by the bridge in the village of Martinovici, crossing the Ouse River. This is obviously the riskiest route into the zone as well, as police will often set up ambushes here to arrest unaware stalkers attempting to enter the zone for the first time. The claw was used in the turbine hole. For a long time, the use of the claw was never known due to its high radioactivity it was assumed it may have been used in the reactor core itself. However, Uncovered photos from a turbine hole have shown the unmistakable silhouette of the claw being used near the seventh turbine, where we know that fragments of the core landed. This would explain its high radioactivity. Joker in use footage. There is some footage of the Joker machine in use as it got caught on debris that stopped it from working. It is one of the many things that you need to see to appreciate for the humour of the situation that the workers somehow managed to find. The Lenin Head. Chernobyl used to be home to a six foot tall statue of Lenin's head placed outside of the main administration building. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union and a rise in anti-Soviet rhetoric by the Ukrainian government, the Lenin statue was moved into a cleaning cupboard citing radioactive contamination, despite readings taken in 2017 showing a normal level. In 2019, it was claimed that the statue was moved to Slavutich, but this has not been confirmed. The third switchyard. Most people generally agreed that the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had two switchyards, a large 750 kV switchyard and a small 330 kV switchyard. However, there is in fact a third, much smaller 110 kV switchyard. AZ5 Double Press Theory 
There is a theory that Toktanov mistakenly pressed the AZ5 button twice, once at 0123.39 and a second time at 0123.41. This is because the computer printouts from the reactor show the AZ5 button at the first time and a second unexplained AZ signal at the second time. The reactor power will prevent all other AZ signals except for AZ1 which may have been produced but not actually switched on in the system. This has led to some people theorising that Toptonov may have let go of the button between these times by mistake, stopping the movement of control rods into the core. A senior reactor engineer of Unit 3, Fatakov, has suggested that this accidental weakening of Toptonov's grip, if confirmed, may be the ultimate reason for the explosion, as if it were held there may have been enough boron in the core to prevent the explosion. This is unconfirmed, however. Hodumchuk Memorial Upgrades the Hodumchuk Memorial in the MPP has changed appearance over recent years. The room to the right of the building has been knocked through, making the memorial longer, and new walls built to make the site narrower and more decorative. Still, it remains the same site where people pay respects to the man whose body was never recovered. The Last Shift of Razim Davletbaev This is the witness testimony of Razim Davletbaev, a worker from the turbine shop who was in the control room at the time of the explosion. Davletbeer participated in the extinguishing of the fires in the turbine hall, where he ultimately survived. Davletbeer's testimony is a unique insight into the chaos of the night. He passed away on the 15th of March, 2017. The mobile laboratory was a Mercedes truck. The mobile laboratory used by the Kharkiv turbine plant was in fact a Mercedes, produced in West Germany, with a Swiss computer attached at the top. Hence the extreme efforts to get it out of the building. It was eventually moved out of the building through the transport corridor, a network of rail lines running through the inside of the building. It found its way outside the front of the building, where it remained there for weeks, before disappearing altogether. Its ultimate fate is unknown, though it is assumed that it was buried in one of the grey sites. Parts from Control Room 4 were used for other control rooms. The control room equipment may have been radioactive, but it was still usable. It is now known that some equipment not confiscated by the government following the disaster, such as the AZ-5 button, was removed from the desk of Control Room 4 and used in place of the equipment in the other control rooms that stopped working. The amusement park was open before the disaster. There are claims that the ferris wheel was open the day after the disaster to distract the population from evacuation. There is no evidence to support this, including no witness testimony. A photo claims to show the ferris wheel in use, supposedly proving the April 27th amusing park of opening theory. However, it's actually taken in March, during testing of the equipment before it's officially opened. Fresh water source for Pripyat stalkers. There is a fresh water source in Pripyat. Due to its close proximity to the Pripyat River, one building houses a small reservoir of fresh water that can be collected and purified with a low dose of radiation. Xie used it in one of his stalk videos. The fire comes. On the night of April 26, multiple witnesses including Nikolai Karpin, engineers from Chernobyl such as Viktor Smagin, and other members of the government commission such as Armin Abagayan, all claim to have seen large fire cones shooting out of the reactor hall, some cresting at the top of the vent stack or 150 metres high. Abagayan reportedly hid under a bridge near the cooling pond canal to escape it. The cause of the fire cones remains unknown as they were accompanied by an enormous amount of radiation, though some have suggested a criticality in the reactor hall or a steam explosion or graphite igniting. Dyatlov's Grave Location Anatoly Dyatlov's grave is located in the Lizov Cemetery in Kiev. However, the exact location amongst the 142 hectares of burial sites is a well-kept secret to prevent any defamation of the grave, where his wife and daughter are also buried. The coordinates are known to a select few, hence why there are now pieces of art and flowers on the site, but they are hard to find online. Liquidator commits suicide due to the HBO miniseries. It is understood that a 61-year-old Kazakhstani liquidator named Gashibe Zuzupov committed suicide after watching the HBO Chernobyl miniseries by jumping off the roof of the five-storey apartment building he lived in. Zuzupov already suffered from depression due to the lack of better housing and pension, despite being promised it. His daughter claimed that watching the miniseries had stirred up his disappointment in the government, pushing him over the edge. 
the man who was in the Unit 3 reactor hull during the explosion. Igor Olenik was a Unit 3 reactor hull operator at the time of the explosion. He was actually stood in the reactor hull near the spent fuel pools and felt the refueling machine strike him in the back as it rocked from the force. He ran from the hull only to find the door had been locked and as he was banging on the door for his colleagues to open it, he saw steam and smoke descending from the ceiling as it was sucked in by ventilation from Unit 4. He ultimately survived and gave his interview on Company E's YouTube channel. 1984 Unit 3-4 Reactor Hall Incidents It has been revealed in KGB documents that mishap occurred at the Unit 3 and 4 reactor halls of the Chernobyl MPP. This was caused by improper installation of the steam separator insulation, which collapsed, exposing the concrete panels of the Unit 4 reactor hall and the Unit 3 reactor hall to temperatures in excess of 270 degrees Celsius. This ultimately led to cracks in the floor slabs as well as their displacement and partial collapse of the wall panels around the reactor hall. The damage was more extensive on Unit 3 due to its age. The KGB reported the issue to MPP management and it was fixed shortly thereafter. Chernobyl MPP workers on April 27th came home to Pripyat evacuated. The workers on the day shift on the April 27th were not made aware of the evacuation and left the MPP to find large columns of the buses taking civilians out of Pripyat. The workers were told to remain in one building together, but their official evacuation was not permitted at this time. Sarcophagus criticality accidents due to rain. There are numerous holes in the old sarcophagus, many of which were large enough to drive a car through. This was intentional as it was thought that making the sarcophagus airtight would lead to heat building up in the building and starting another meltdown. Numerous incidents were reported where heavy rainfall would cause a surge in neutrons in the sarcophagus as the water would moderate nuclear fission. The real death toll. The real death toll of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster is not known, with estimates ranging from 31 to 450,000. Based upon the knowledge that 100 millisieverts of radiation is the lowest accumulated dose of radiation a person can receive before the risk of cancer starts to increase, we can assume that an excess of 8,250 deaths will occur due to cancer. Given the ratio of non-cancer deaths to cancer deaths from radiation is 2 to 1, we can assume 24,750 total deaths due to Chernobyl. A full explanation can be seen in the background. Diagnostic Boy Prototypes the diagnostic boys used in the reactor hull of Chernobyl Unit 4 were not the first ones created. Prototypes developed by the Kachatov Institute are known to exist and have been photographed, although their current whereabouts are unknown. The Second Fire on May 23, 1986 On the night of May 23, 1986, a new fire was reported in the cable area of the North Main Circulation Pump Hole. Initial attempts to contain the blaze saw one firefighter fall into a hole, breaking his leg. It was ultimately decided to not attempt to extinguish the electrical fire due to the intense radiation in the area, leaving cables to burn as the power to Unit 4 was fully disconnected. Third reactor shut down days before the official shutdown. The third reactor suffered two incidents that forced a premature shutdown days before the official shutdown. The first, on November 19, 2000, saw the reactor disconnected from the electrical grid due to a short circuit as a result of ice building up on the 750kV Vinitsa line. This also resulted in two other reactors shutting down, one at Zaporizhia and another at South Ukraine. The reactor was repaired and restarted on December 1, 2000. The reactor was shut down again on December 6, 2000. This was because of soaring temperatures in the water entering the reactor, threatening to cause pump cavitation, as well as damaging the valves and other mechanical systems for the third reactor. The reactor was restarted again once repairs were carried out limping on at 5% of its power until its official shutdown on December 15th, 2000. Guards almost killing people escaping the building. On the night of April 26th, 1986, a group of survivors including Oleg Gemrick and Anatoly Kurgers, who had been near the reactor hall at the time of the explosion, made their way to the second administration building to get help. The on-duty guard nearly shot and killed the group, believing they were trespassers. It was only when Kyrgyz showed his severe injuries to the guard that they were believed, although he did almost shoot Gemrick again after he attempted to board an ambulance as they had left their pass inside the building. The fuel was in the water before the divers helped drain the water. 
It is a common belief that the divers who trained the water prevented a theorized thermal explosion that would have dispersed a large amount of nuclear debris around Europe, causing a large part to become uninhabitable. But this is not true. Ignoring the fact that such a scenario is impossible as the steam could escape, preventing a thermal explosion, it turns out that the fuel had already entered the water, immediately cooling and turning into a pumice-like rock which floated on top of the water. Unit 4 Reserve Control Room Despite many searches and its importance in the events on the night of the disaster, there are currently no available photos of the reserve control room of Unit 4. The closest available are distant photos where you can see in through the window. Precise Dreg Information The exact data for the reactor is currently available online, including the position of the control rods, the flow of water through the main circulation pumps, and water levels inside the steam separators. The data helps present a vivid picture of what the operators were seeing in the last minutes before disaster. Secret Book Collections on the Nuclear Power Plant website more than 100 books are currently stored on the Chernobyl nuclear power plant website, many in Russian, including Midnight in Chernobyl, Sherbak's book, and the photographic collection by Igor Kosti. All of them are free as well. Operation Needle was a failure. The attempt to measure the reactor temperature and radiation actually turned out to have missed the target. Instead of recording the measurements of the reactor core, they instead measured the temperature and radioactivity of the North Spent Fuel Pool. Somehow, the Soviet scientists did not realise the low temperature and radiation levels of the reactor core until 1989, three years after the explosion. Unit 2 Turbine Hole Fire Damage Few people are aware of damage caused to the Unit 2 reactor due to the turbine hole fire. The collapse of the roof destroyed the feed water pumping equipment for Unit 2 and further damage to the pumps themselves. This forced Unit 2 operators to cut the pumps to the reactor to prevent them becoming a fire hazard. Now operating without pumps, putting the reactor in a situation similar to Fukushima in 2011, they were able to correct the situation by opening steam relief valves and supplying the reactor with a singular condensate pump to the steam separators. This prevented a meltdown ultimately, although Unit 2 was not restarted due to this damage. Phone transcripts published on the night of the disaster. The KGB collected various pieces of information about the operation of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, including the phone calls between workers. This meant that, when KGB files were released in 2020 about Chernobyl, these phone transcripts from the night of the disaster, including the preparations for the test and the first pieces of information announced about the explosion, were made available as they were caught in phone calls. P-14 Lenner and Bunker the P-14 early warning system that was used to detect incoming aerial targets so they could be shot down before they posed a threat. A specific P-14 Lena in a corresponding bunker can be found a few kilometres away from the town of Chernobyl. The barracks and canteen supplying this small military base also survived the decontamination following the disaster and remain accessible if you seek them. Chernobyl Tor was temporarily restricted in the exclusion zone because one of its turrets went to the toilet in a cooling pond canal. One story from the exclusion zone, unique for the events contained. Denis Vishnesky detailed in one post how he came across a Chernobyl Tor bus nearly three kilometres off route in the exclusion zone during a scientific expedition he was touring. He followed them for 600 or more metres when the bus stopped again and the man got off with a packet of wet wipes walking into one of the canals feeding into the cooling pond to go to the toilet, a highly radioactive area. For obvious reasons, this blatant disregard of the rules for visiting the exclusion zone resulted in a temporary restriction. Nineteen eighty four Unit five Canteen Explosion During the installation of waterproofing at the Unit five canteen, a place that could hold five hundred and thirty people. On the 28th of February 1984, a large explosion occurred. It was later established that the cause of the accident was the use of gasoline bitumen mastic, a waterproofing resin, around the refrigerator, creating gasoline vapours in the air. It is then believed that either an electrical malfunction or, more likely, a worker lighting up a cigarette ignited the gases, causing an explosion. One worker, Mikhail Ivanovich Anyelenko, was fatally wounded. He was 34 years old. Three other construction workers, Bulava, Rudchenko, and Savanitsky, were critically injured. Chechorov faked the grain criticality. 
Remember the rise in vision due to rain that was mentioned earlier in the iceberg? It has since been revealed that Konstantin Chechorov faked these events to secure more funding for work in the sarcophagus, and to speed up work on the new safe confinement. This proved somewhat effective, as a matter of fact, and there remains incredible footage of water being poured into the sarcophagus to suppress dust. Missing photos from April 26. Anatoly Raskazov did not take just three photos on April 26. After he returned from the helicopter flight, he was sent to take more photos from the ground. He brought two cameras and photographed a dozen images with each. The film in one camera was destroyed the moment he photographed some graphite. However, the other camera's photos were successfully developed. These images were then confiscated by the KGB and have not been released to the public. Their current whereabouts, if they have not been destroyed, is unknown. Metlenko's assistants. Gennady Metlenko was the representative for Don Tekinego, the group who managed the turbine rundown program on the night of the disaster. He was also accompanied by two assistants, who were present in the control room at the time of the explosion. However, their identities have not been released, and their fate is unknown. Sarcophagus dust accidents. In 1989, a piece of drilling equipment being used to drill into the reactor core was knocked over, forcing an evacuation of the entire sarcophagus. The dust kicked up by the equipment landing on the floor made it impossible to see, and was in fact highly radioactive. On their way out, some guards refused to leave as an officer had in command of them to do so. The scientists told them that if they didn't leave in the next few minutes, there would no longer be an eater, as they would remain there forever. This had the desired effect. Scientists went from room to room to spray down the dust with a hosepipe, which took weeks to complete. The drilling operation was eventually completed and allowed a scientist to place a camera inside the reactor core, showing it was in fact empty. The Bridge of Death is named because two stalkers were run over on it. The Bridge of Death is an unusual bridge in that it is very steep on both sides, allowing cars to become airborne if they travel fast enough, as well as making oncoming traffic impossible to see. This proved disastrous following the accident, as two stalkers who had been losing Pripyat were killed in a traffic collision with a military truck that hadn't seen them on the other side of the bridge. After that, the nickname, the Bridge of Death, was given. The Kaliminchuk Calculations Vladimir Kaliminchuk was a nuclear scientist who helped to develop the calculations for the last few seconds inside the Chernobyl Reactor 4 before the explosions. The data produced has been instrumental in supporting Insag 7 although the actual calculations themselves are rare to find. Krog Ionosphere Research Station Two kilometers southwest of the Dugal Radar is the Krog Ionosphere Research Station. Composed of a 200 meter wide circle of 240 antennas, the research station was used to probe the ionosphere, the part of the atmosphere that touches space. It was thought that this ring could detect the direction of an oncoming missile through the electromagnetic signal produced. It did not actually work as intended, but was still used for other ionosphere experiments. Today, the road to the station is overgrown, and it is very rare for tour guides to visit this location. Graveyard near the Reactor 5 and 6 cooling towers The cooling pond was not originally an empty field. The village of Nargotsi and the Podolizny farm were located in the area. The buildings were destroyed, the population displaced, and the area then dug out to form a cooling pond. The only evidence left of their existence is in Nargotsi Cemetery, a monument to those who died in World War II, and the Fish Farm Radiobiological Laboratory built nearby. Chernobyl Castle Ruins In the 14th to 20th centuries, the town of Chernobyl, for which the nuclear power plant in the area was named, also contained a castle. The castle has since been destroyed, but the ruins are known to still exist, even though no known photos remain as the area is covered in dense vegetation. Humpbacked Polish Chuck Gay Club in one of the villages in the zone, someone has turned a building into a gay club. The name, Humpback to Polish Chuck Gay Club, has been inscribed into the door and a variety of provocative images have been pinned to the walls. What actually happens here is unknown, as no videos or photos of the place in use have been released online, although we can probably guess. Hodomchuk's Last Words Valery Hodomchuk is known to have died in the explosion, however, the phone calls released by the KGB may have captured his final words before he died. They are nothing of significance, translated as, quote, I need to recharge the lower feed for 22. Okay, come on. So it's shortened. One, end quote. It suggests a minor mechanical fault may have occurred on the 22nd pump, two minutes before the explosion.
It also shows the calmness in the pump hole before the explosion. A photo of the north main circulation pump hole is here. The second closest engine is the 22nd pump. This is the most likely location for Hodham Chuck's body. The pink liquid inside the sarcophagus. Many rare photos of the interior of the sarcophagus are available online. Many of them show the scientists measuring the depth of water that pools inside the building. One of them also appears to show a pink coloured liquid of unknown origin that the worker has to lean over to measure. The cause of the colour and the precise location inside the building is unknown. Kutor Zolotnev Perhaps the most unexplored section of the zone, seen by almost nobody and on virtually no maps. Rumours about this farm are rife. It is claimed that one person lives here, a woman, aged over 100, who chose not to leave after the disaster. People who evacuated from nearby into Belarus already have names for her. A sorceress, a witch. People who deliver food to the self-settlers of the exclusion zone refuse to speak about Kutor Zolotnev beyond telling people there is nothing to do there. Those who have gone claim to have seen animal bones on the ground, amulets and an atmosphere that made them want to leave the area immediately. One stalker who did venture here claimed to have seen an older man in a window, watching the group, but when they looked back, they were gone. Due to the mobile coverage in the area, or lack thereof, it is very rare for anyone to go here. On Google Earth, only a few buildings and foundations can be seen in the area, and no images online appear to be available from the ground. And this finishes the Chernobyl iceberg. We have covered more than 200 individual entries about the Chernobyl disaster and the events surrounding it, believe it or not. It's amazing to consider that, especially when we realise this is only a snippet of the true vastness of knowledge that can be gained by exploring the topics of each of these subjects. Thank you for sticking all the way to the end. It means a lot, and I hope that you've learned something new. Thank you.